Welcome to Nonprofit WordPress from Blazing Moon. In this series, we're going to explore how, even if you have little or no technical expertise, you can use WordPress for your nonprofit, from creating a very basic website in just a few minutes to exploring all kinds of tools and techniques to make your site work even better for you. This first session is Episode 1. Uh, it's an introduction and an overview of what WordPress is and why your nonprofit might want to use it. Every nonprofit clearly need some kind of a web presence, and most have something. Maybe you've got a professionally designed and built website. Maybe you've been using a social media site as your primary presence. Maybe you've got a site that was built by a staff member or a volunteer or a consultant, and the person who built it for you is still maintaining it for you, or maybe they've left and you feel a little bit stuck. Every time you need to update the site, somebody has to dust off some old notes and cross their fingers and hope that it all works the same way that they vaguely remember it working the last time they had to update it. The catch with websites, the problem, is that just having some kind of web presence isn't enough. You want something that costs as little as it reasonably can. Uh, you want something that is easy to maintain and update that's not fragile because it's no fun at all to update a site if you feel like a stray key press or two is going to wreck the whole thing. And you also want a website that's built using tools that a lot of people have heard of and are familiar with so that it's easy for you to find people who can help you when you need help. This web series is about WordPress and about how nonprofits can make use of it. A lot of people think of WordPress and they'll think of the word blog and they'll kind of connect the two and, and feel like WordPress is a blogging tool. And, and that's certainly true. It began as a blogging tool and it is still very good for blogging. But reality is you can build nearly any kind of website you want to in WordPress whether or not it includes a blog. And while no website building tool is perfect for everyone, WordPress is the most popular website platform for some very good reasons. Uh, you can see here that we're talking about something like 20% of all the sites in the world are based on WordPress, one out of five. That's an enormous number. That's somewhere, the most recent count I've seen is somewhere around 75 million websites are built on WordPress. It's, it's popular for good reasons, and some of the things that make WordPress popular also make it an especially good match for nonprofits. In this series, we're going to explore WordPress, and you can decide whether it might work for your nonprofit. This might be useful to anyone who's wondering about WordPress or wants to set up a website, but I especially have in mind a nonprofit organization that's thinking about setting up a new site or uh, updating or replacing an existing site who wants to do it as much as possible by themselves, maybe uh, with staff, maybe with help from volunteers, but uh, where possible not having to bring in lots of external help, where you're really looking for a, a good solid site that's just very easy to update, where you don't have to worry about breaking things and where you don't have to scratch your head and remember every time you need to change something. So I think a good starting point is to look at what is a website, which may sound like a, a stupid question because everybody's been on a website, but underneath a website is a whole lot of things. Website is a bunch of files and data that define the way the website is going to look. And those files and data live on a computer somewhere. And so when we're talking about setting up a site, we've got three big questions. One is the content of the site. What's it going to look like and what's it going to have on it? This is an example of a website that's built on WordPress. The site could look like this, it could look very different. Uh, WordPress doesn't dictate a lot about how the site is structured, but one of the most important things obviously is what are we going to say and what's it going to look like. Second question is what tool will we use to make it? Uh, because one option is certainly, and here's the example site that we're going to be working on through this tutorial, one possibility is to go old school on it and to really edit it using low-level tools and get in here and look at the nasty ugly source code you probably don't want to do this most people don't get excited or interested in looking at something like this what they'd really rather do is use something that looks familiar something that looks more like a word processor where you're just typing in the information you want you've got some nice buttons for bolding and all sorts of things so that you can focus more on how the thing looks than on underneath how it's built together so first question, what will it have on it and what's it going to look like? 
second question, what tools are we going to use? And the third question is, whose computer is it going to live on? The vast majority of the time, you're going to want your website to live on somebody else's computer, the computer of a professional web hosting company of some kind, which might look something like this. You're going to have racks and racks of servers. You'll have technical support staff who you can email or chat with or ideally uh, pick up the phone and talk to if something goes wrong. You, you also could put the website on a computer that you own, and that might look like this. In other words, don't do that. Uh, you, you, you absolutely can, but you should only even think about something like that, about putting a computer you own on the Internet for people to visit if you have really deep and experienced technical staff. I'm going to assume at this point that you're going to use a shared hosting service, some kind of professional hosting vendor, and we'll talk about that uh, as time goes by. Having talked about what a website is, let's dig into what WordPress is. There are, as I said, lots of ways to make a website. And, and if you're curious to read more about that, I have a blog post that talks about some of the different ways that a nonprofit could uh, build a website, website options for nonprofits on blazingmoon.org. Recently, all complex websites and even most simple sites are built using a class of tools called content management systems. A content management system tries to make it so that you don't have to worry so much about the wrapper around the content, about the, the menus and the footer and the header. You can focus mainly on what's the core information you're trying to get on the website. There are a lot of content management systems out there. WordPress is the most popular. One of the great things about a content management system like WordPress is that in many, in fact in most cases, in, in, the, in the top three, the system is free uh, and it's it's a very good deal because you don't have to pay money up front to get the tool to build your website. However, there's a saying in the web development community which is that this kind of software is free as in kittens. In other words, when somebody gives you that kitten, you are not done spending time or spending money. You do get it for free at the beginning and in fact for most of the options we're going to be looking at, uh, the website itself can be free or very inexpensive. But it is going to take some investment of time, and the more time you invest in the site, the more awesome it can be. And it may take some investment in money. The first options we'll look at will really be completely free options in terms of your money outlay. But expect to spend some time keeping the website up and going. What we're really trying to do with a content management system like WordPress is help you to focus just on the juicy center of content goodness of any given web page. So let's we'll look at our example site here. Um, Trees to Peace is a hypothetical nonprofit. And let's go to what is Trees to Peace, what we do. And so there's actually a fair amount going on here. We've got the logo up here. We've got a menu with all these little submenus underneath it. We've got a header. We've got the content of this page. Uh, we've got a link to like the page. We've got a place where you can leave a comment. We've got a footer with all kinds of information in it. The goal of a content management system is that even though there could be 5 or 10 or 50 or 100 pages on your site, when you edit a given page, you really just want to focus on this part here, the title and the content. The other stuff is controlled more centrally. If I want to change the menu, I can change that in one place and have it take effect on every page in the site, rather than having each page have a copy of the menu that has to be edited and maintained, which is what I would think of as the old style way of developing a site. The way that's done is with something called, in WordPress, a theme. You can choose a structure, a, a, you know, colors, fonts, the way the, the site is going to look, by picking a theme for your site. And this is the first time we're really in here. This is the WordPress dashboard. And this is where we can control everything about this example site, Trees to Peace. The place that I look at the theme, and we'll go into this in a lot more detail, but just to give you an idea of what's going on here is under the Appearance menu. I go to Appearance, Themes, and I'm going to see a list of themes that I can choose. Many of these, and in this case most of these, are free. There's no charge for the theme itself. Some of them you might pay a fee, might be $80, $40, $100, and those are going to give you some additional features. This site, the sample site for Trees to Peace, let's go back up to the top level, this is using a theme called McKinley, which is one of the free themes available on WordPress.com. Let's just, for sake of showing what this looks like, let's switch it to Sorbet. So I'm going to go to a different theme called Sorbet. I'm going to activate it. You can see there are 250 themes available 
in WordPress.com right now. Now if I go back to my website and I refresh it, it's going to look very different. I still have an accent photo, although it's quite different. I uh, no longer have the logo. I instead just have this kind of site title. I've got a very different color scheme. The fonts are different. And I've done that just by clicking a button. Different footer, different sidebar. If I go back, I'm going to stick with McKinley, and I'll reactivate that. And my website's going to be back the way that I want it to look. So the theme is going to define a lot of things about the website. It's going to define colors, styles, uh, whether there are sidebars or footers, uh, fonts, all sorts of things like that. There are other things you can define uh, outside of the theme. For example, if I go to widgets, you'll see an area here for the footer. And I've chosen for this site to have the footer include a site map, posts, contact info, search, and an RSS link. If I switch back to the website, we'll see at the footer, site map, posts, contact information, search, and follow us on RSS. Some themes will have a footer, some will have a sidebar, some will have both, some will have multiple. But I have a lot of ability to control the way the site works from a single place that's going to affect what it looks like and how it acts on every page. And that's the great power of a content management system. Central control for the things that are common to many pages. And when you want to deal with something that affects just a single page, I can go to the editor and I can just edit the content for that one post. There are several different flavors of WordPress and in upcoming posts we'll be looking at that. If you'd like to read about that, there's a post on Blazing Moon's site, blazingmoon.org, called Choosing the Right WordPress for Your Website. We'll go into that in a lot of detail in these video tutorials. And that's our introduction to uh, WordPress, what it is, what it's for. In the next episode, we'll see how WordPress lets you set up a new website from scratch in just a few minutes. And I hope you'll join me for that. If you have comments or questions, I'm happy to answer them. Just go to blazingmoon.org and write a comment in this episode's post. Thanks for coming. See you next time.